Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we are taking a closer look at another late Pleistocene mammal, the direwolf. The direwolf roamed the Americas from around 300,000 years ago and went extinct around 10,000 years ago. The first specimen was found in the summer of 1854 in the bed of the Ohio River near Evansville, Indiana. Since then, fossils of thousands of individuals have been found, many of them from the La Brea Tar Pits in California. If you saw the video I did on the Smilodon, the saber-toothed cat, you may remember that many saber-toothed fossils were found there also. The direwolf is the most common carnivore fossil found at the Tar Pits, followed by Smilodon. Analysis of the remains reveal a lot of information about the direwolf. It was about as big as the largest modern grey wolves. The largest northern wolves today have a shoulder height not exceeding 97 centimetres and a body length not exceeding 180 centimetres. Some direwolf specimens from the tar pits are smaller than this and some are bigger. The direwolf had smaller feet and shorter legs than the grey wolf but a larger head. Its skeleton was also more robust, meaning that the bones were thicker and heavier and the direwolf would have been more powerfully muscled. The direwolf would have weighed around 68 kilograms, that's about 150 pounds, compared to the average weight of the grey wolf, which is around 43 kilograms, that's about 95 pounds. The direwolf and the grey wolf coexisted for about 100,000 years, but likely did not compete with each other, as they would have gone for different prey. The direwolf being large and powerful, with its shorter legs, meaning it was not as fast as the grey wolf, points to its preferred prey being larger, slower herbivores. The grey wolf would have hunted faster prey, like the elk, whereas the direwolf hunted horses and bison mostly, but also ate ground sloth, camels and mastodons. This is backed up by chemical analysis of the bones of the direwolf, which reveals the type of prey animals they were eating. The skull of the direwolf also shows enhancement for the attachment of powerful jaw muscles, and studies have shown that the bite force of the direwolf is the strongest among all canine species. The teeth also reveal some interesting features. Many specimens recovered from the tar pits show broken teeth. This is a common occurrence in many carnivore species. Tooth breakage is related to a carnivore's behaviour. A study of nine modern carnivores found that one in four adults has suffered tooth breakage, and that half of these breakages were of the canine teeth. The most breakage occurred in the spotted hyena that consumes all of its prey, including the bone. The least breakage occurred in the African wild dog, and the grey wolf ranked in between these two. The eating of bone increases the risk of accidental fracture due to the relatively high, unpredictable stresses that it creates. Canines are the teeth most likely to break because of their shape and function, which subjects them to bending stresses that are unpredictable in both direction and magnitude. The risk of tooth fracture is also higher when killing large prey. Another factor that can influence tooth breakage is the availability of prey. If prey is scarce, animals will eat faster and consume more of the animal, including bone. If prey is plentiful or competition small, then there is less need to eat the more difficult parts and more care can be taken while eating, leading to less tooth breakages. Interestingly, a study of direwolf remains from the tar pits over a range of time periods indicated a difference in tooth breakage percentages. One pit contained fossil direwolves dated from 15,000 years ago and another dated from 13,000 years ago. The results of the study showed that the 15,000-year-old direwolves had three times more tooth breakage than the 13,000-year-old direwolves, whose breakage matched those of the nine modern carnivores. The study concluded that between 15,000 to 14,000 years ago, prey availability was less or competition was higher for direwolves, and that by 13,000 years ago, as the prey species moved towards extinction, predator competition had declined and therefore the frequency of tooth breakage in direwolves had also declined. We know that modern wolves are pack hunters, so what about direwolves? Again, the study of jaws show that they match those of modern pack hunters who deliver many shallow bites to their prey rather than one big crippling bite like a solitary hunter. Also, several remains from the tar pits show horrific injuries including completely broken forelegs and partially crushed skulls. 
Remarkably, however, many of these injuries actually healed with some of the fossils displaying evidence that the wolves in question lived for months and even years after the injury happening. A solitary hunter would be unable to hunt with these injuries and so eventually starved to death. As a pack member, an injured direwolf may have been able to drag itself to a kill, although it may have had to wait for the others to finish. Some have even speculated that the healthier wolves may have helped the injured by bringing them food while they recovered. In comparison, this behaviour is not known in the grey wolf, but it is seen in lions. The dire wolf lived at the same time as, and would have competed with, the Smilodon and the American lion. Other large carnivores of the time were the short-faced bear, known here in Ark if not in reality as the dire bear, the modern cougar, the Pleistocene coyote and the Pleistocene grey wolf. The dire wolf disappeared around 10,000 years ago, around the same time as other Pleistocene megafauna. It's likely that it became extinct for very similar reasons as other species I've covered in previous videos. Climate change and the arrival of modern humans that competed with it for similar prey meant that the large herbivores began to disappear. And with the disappearance of its food, the dire wolf also went into decline and became extinct. Well that's all for today, thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did enjoy it, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment and share this video with anyone you think might enjoy it too. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and come back next time for more videos like this one here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.